I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue, clouds of white, bright blessed day, the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people passing by. I see friends shaking hands saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies crying. I watch them grow, they'll learn much more than I'll ever know, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself. What a wonderful world. Good morning. Welcome to Jefferson First United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Heather Dorr, and it's my joy to welcome you this uh, second Sunday of Pentecost. So last week, uh, celebrated the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. And today we're uh, continuing and we're doing a whole summer of uh, kind of the summer of the Spirit. A very special thing happening today is that uh, this morning, for the first time in over two years, I believe, we're going to be able to offer a communion uh, where you come forward and it does not come from a prepackaged cup. So you can clap if that makes you excited. So we've got uh, little squares of bread, and then under here we've got little uh, cups of grape juice. And so later on in worship today, uh, after the Lord's Prayer and after the communion stewards are ready, you're invited to come forward uh, via the center aisle and pick uh, one of the two stations. You'll be handed a piece of bread. You'll be handed a little cup. You can take those. If you want, you could take a second to, uh, we don't have our kneelers up, but if you want to take a second to sit in the front row or to uh, kneel here on the steps, you're welcome to do so. And then I think we were going to have trash cans on either side for the little cups. Did that happen? Oh, looks like that's going to happen. <laughs> we got plenty of time before that. Now, if uh, you are not ready to take uh, communion this way, uh, and you would rather take it from a prepackaged cup. I think we've got them uh, sitting in the back. I actually don't see any sitting in the back, um, but uh, we can get those out for you. And then uh, if you are joining us online today and you would like to share in communion, uh, you can do so as well with whatever elements that you have at home. Uh, we will offer a blessing for those as well. And so I'm excited. I shared a communion uh, in person uh, last week with the members of the Iowa Annual Conference as we celebrated uh, ordinations and commissioning and retirement and uh, recognition. So it's wonderful to share together in this feast uh, with you guys as well. Um, uh, we've got more special music with Gary singing later in worship, but uh, today I invite you to stand in body or in spirit and let's begin worship with our call to worship. <clears throat> Where we are weak, God, you are strong. Where we are lost, God, you find us. Where we are poor in spirit, 
you bless us richly. Where we have no word, God, you know the prayers in our hearts. Let us join together in our unison prayer. Holy Spirit, we long to feel you among us. In our weakness, your strength is beyond measure. Give us a portion of that power today that we may know how deeply held we can be. May we understand the depth of your love and compassion so we can be secure in your arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come forward. Good morning. So last week, uh, we talked a little bit about the Holy Spirit. What do you guys know about the Holy Spirit? Do you know anything about it? What do you know about it? No. Do you ladies know anything about the Holy Spirit? So the Holy Spirit is God, and we believe that God is a father, 
and God is the Son, Jesus, and God is also a Holy Spirit. Or you might hear an old-fashioned word, Holy Ghost. And so all summer long, we'll be talking about the Holy Spirit. And there's lots of different ways that we can understand the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit does. But one way that I want to talk about today is the Holy Spirit is kind of like a best friend. What is a best friend like? What makes somebody a best friend? Do you have any friends? What makes somebody a best friend? One sec, bud. What, what makes a good friend? Being nice to them. Being nice, yes. Friends should definitely be nice. I play with Hansen. Playing together? Yeah, with Hansen. Yeah, you have a friend that you like to play with. So yeah, spending time together is one yeah. thing that makes a best friend. What makes a best friend? Being nice. So that's some of the ways that bless you. That's one of the, some of the ways that the Holy Spirit is like a best friend. The Holy Spirit spends time with us, and the Holy Spirit is nice to us and loves us. And so just like a, a best friend is with us no matter what, the Holy Spirit is with us no matter what. So today we don't have kids' church, but I have an activity for you to do when you sit back down. So if you didn't already grab crayons on your way in, you can go and find the crayons on the kids' table. And then I have this. And it looks very strange. Do you have any guess of what this might be? I bet you don't, because it looks kind of funny. I found these online. These are friendship bracelets. So if you cut out the bracelet, and then you cut right on this cut da dash line right here, and you color this heart and then cut it in half and glue it here, when you cut this and you cut this, then it comes together to make a heart on your bracelet. Yes. So I don't have any scissors, but those crayons are on the kids' table. So if you want to color a friendship bracelet today, and then what do you think would be a good thing to do with your friendship bracelet, your set? What would you, if you had one for yourself, who would you give the other one to? A friend, exactly. And you can think about how much that friend uh, is, is with you no matter what and loves you just like God and the Holy Spirit are with you at all times and loves you and wants you to be kind and love other people. So I'll hand each of these, uh, I'll hand you each, uh, well, I printed out a couple, so if you want two of them, you can. And you can color those, and when you get home, you can cut them out and then find a friend to give the friendship bracelet to, all right? Would you guys pray with me? Can you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you so much for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I'm so thankful the Holy Spirit is my friend no matter what. Help me to be a good friend to others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you want a coloring sheet. Nope. If you want the coloring sheet, it's right there. You can have a couple of them. I printed out 10. Grandma says one. There's more. Sometimes you mess up and you need to start again or you have lots of friends. That's okay. All right, our scripture reading today comes from the letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 22 through 28. We know that the whole creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains up until now. And it's not only the creation. We ourselves, who have the Spirit 
as the first crop of the harvest, also grown inside as we wait to be adopted and for our bodies to be set free. We were saved in hope. If we see what we hope for, that isn't hope for who hopes for what they already see. But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit comes to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit thinks because he pleads for the saints, consistent with God's will. We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. This morning is part of a sermon series that will take us through the whole summer. All summer long, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit and about spiritual gifts. The name of the sermon series is Holy Spirit Activate. It comes from a clip that went viral last fall, and I'm going to show it to you guys. Let me set it up while they're setting it up up there. Uh, Wilson Phillips and Pentatonix went head-to-head on Celebrity Family Feud. And when it was time for the final round, something happened that no one had expected. And let's see if they've got that clip. Anybody here like Family Feud? No, nobody? I love Family Feud. There was a computer game I used to play all the time, or it was an online game. Does anybody know what this clip is? No? You're getting there. I know you'll find it. So this is the beginning, I think like 140 in. (coughs) Actually, it looks like you went to another video. Sorry. We've had so many seamless videos. Not today. That's okay. Yeah, I think you like clicked ahead to another video. That looks right. If we can get the volume. Yeah. All right. Y'all are like, this better be a good clip. Can we get the volume? Oh, I know.
All right, there we go. All right, I love that clip. But I think the thing that I like best about it is if you know Family Feud, they need to get 200 on the final round, right? And so Carney had gotten 184. She only needed 16. And yet, did she get it? Oh, I don't know. I, didn't, I haven't finished watching it. But um, she only needed 16. And usually when you're watching Family Feud, like, that's not very much. And yet she still wanted to pause and invite the Holy Spirit into that space and, uh, and offer a prayer to the Holy Spirit. What if that little prayer chant became our theme song this summer? What if no matter what we faced, big or small, we walked into it asking the Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. 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 Why don't we start out by praying for the Holy Spirit to activate as we open today's scripture. Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture for this morning begins with the assertion that all of creation is groaning in labor pains. Anyone here ever been in labor? or been in the room with somebody who was in labor, or watched a television show or movie with someone who was in labor. There are people who talk about the beauty of labor and bringing new life into this world, but in my experiences, labor was exhausting and disorienting. All of creation is in labor, Paul says. All of creation is rippling in pain, is tired and stressed and straining to birth something new into this world. Creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains. In other words, the world is tough right now. The world isn't a peaceful place to be. It's never really been. The world, as Paul sees it, is working out something new, preparing to give birth to something new, but that work isn't easy. And like a woman in labor, the work takes time, and it takes the support of people who love and people who have knowledge of how the birthing process works. The new thing that creation is longing to birth is the reign of Christ. Creation is groaning as she waits to meet her Savior for God's kingdom to come down to earth for all time. I don't know about you, but I feel that groaning every single day. The deep pain in my heart and soul, a rippling desire to be a part of birthing a new way of living into this world the labor and the struggle of trying to make God's kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. All of creation is groaning, Paul says. We are all longing for the coming of God's kingdom because this world is untenable. Gun violence in our schools, our grocery stores, our churches and concerts, It's untenable. The divisions that keep our political system in disarray, it's untenable. The hateful rhetoric and manipulative power plays in our own denomination, it's untenable. Racism and sexism and homophobia and transphobia, it's untenable. Death and diseases tearing us down and claiming our loved ones. It's untenable. This world is just not how it's supposed to be. 
We feel that every day when we look outside of ourselves, all of creation groans in that pain. But Paul reframes the groaning and the pain, and he tells us that it's not the last gasps of a dying world. The groaning and the pain are part of the laboring process. As this broken world struggles to birth a new and transformed creation into existence. All of creation struggles in this. All of creation is giving birth to the incoming kingdom of God. And we as Christians are a central part of that struggle because we have the Holy Spirit as the first crop of the harvest. Through the Holy Spirit activating in our lives, we've been given a taste of what God's kingdom can look like. And it has whetted our appetite for the kingdom to come. Imagine, if you will, a fresh batch of cookies right out of the oven, still warm and gooey. And after they've had a minute to sit, but before they get cold, you sneak a bite of maybe a malformed one or the smallest cookie. We've all done it. Such a sweet taste, savory and tantalizing. It whets your appetite for another cookie, or ten. And it gets you excited to share in this dessert with other people. The first fruit has prepared you for the joy to come. In the same way, through the coming of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit activating in our lives, our appetites have been whetted, like that still warm cookie, giving us a taste of how things can be, and giving us fortitude to face the present. That means as Christians, because we have been impacted by God, because the Holy Spirit has been present in our lives, and we have felt that activation, we were given a preview of the kingdom to come. And we get to act as a support system for creation, like a midwife in the birthing process, and give reassurance for the joy to come. A few years ago, I watched the American telenovela Jane the Virgin. Great show, I loved it. In this show, uh, the family has a tradition that the women would hold one another's hands during labor, and they would reassure them with these words, five minutes of pain for a lifetime of happiness. Five minutes of pain for a lifetime of happiness. Or as Paul puts it in Romans 8.18, I believe that the present suffering is nothing compared to the coming glory that is going to be revealed to us. In a world filled with pain and heartache, Paul promises a redemption and a purpose is in sight. Creation is birthing something new. God's kingdom is being brought into this world, and it will be a glorious future. We've been given a taste of what the kingdom will look like, and we can reassure others of that hope that is coming. Like those who have seen a really good movie or read a really good book or gone on a really great vacation, we can give others our review of what we have experienced so they can know of the joy that is coming. In the meantime, we live in the here and now. We live in the in-between. We live between Christ's first appearance and Christ's final appearance. We We live between the cookies coming out of the oven and dessert being served. What we long for has yet to be fully realized. In the meantime, we groan, we wait, and we hope. And the same Holy Spirit that gave us hope and a vision comforts us in that in-between time. In the same way, the Spirit comes to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit pleads our case with unexpressed groans. 
Have you ever not known what to pray or how to pray? I suspect the answer is yes, which is why we've just completed a six-week sermon series on the Lord's Prayer and how to pray, because sometimes we don't have the words to pray or when to pray or what to say. If at the end of that sermon series you were still confused or you didn't know what to pray beyond the Lord's Prayer, which is a perfectly acceptable and wonderful prayer, by the way, then I hope that these words from Paul can be a reassurance. When we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf. When the world is too tough, when the labor pains are too intense, when that lifetime of happiness seems too far away, the Holy Spirit sits with us and groans with us. The Holy Spirit doesn't leave us alone, not ever. When you don't know what to pray, when the world is weighing you down, I'd invite you to activate the power of the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit pray on your behalf. Sit in that silence, in the pain, in the confusion. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate, activate, activate. Amen! All right, let's go. And the Holy Spirit who activated in our lives and offered us the gift of hope is the same Holy Spirit who sits with us when the light is dim and everything feels hopeless. The Holy Spirit is with us in the joy and in the pain in the suffering and in the reward, in the work and in the outcome. The Holy Spirit is activated in our lives for all steps in our journey, the ones that we celebrate and the ones that we lament. This summer, we will all experience highs and lows. We will all have pains and times when hope feels dead. And the Holy Spirit is present with us, praying on our behalf, groaning with us beyond words. And we'll all have celebrations and wonders. And the Holy Spirit will be like that midwife, encouraging us and sharing in the joy with us, knowing that we can do all things with God by our side. Let's spend the summer with the Spirit. And when we face anything big or small, let's call on the Holy Spirit to activate hope and encouragement in our lives so we can be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Let's join together in our prayer song from the faith we sing, number 2117, Spirit of God.
us in your holy name the power to heal, to share your love everywhere. We cannot fail or fall or no defeat at all held in your hand. As we've invited the Holy Spirit to be present with us, uh, a few ways that we can be present with one another. Um, I think I haven't said it for a few weeks, but just always a reminder to fill out the connection card. All we really need is your name. It helps us to take attendance and know who's here. But if you want to update any information, if you need anything, or you want to share a a joy or a concern uh, so we can share it with... um, uh, share it with... um, the prayer chain or just share it with me, you can fill that out and put that in the box uh, by the bulletins on your way out. Uh, I hope that you came to worship hungry because we've got our first non-drive-through, drive-through meal, uh, pancakes after worship. Uh, There's no need to pre-register. Um, and uh, if my cookie analogy whetted your appetite, I think there's chocolate chip pancakes Uh, blueberries, bananas, probably a couple others. And so a great chance to sit down and fellowship and to share um, with one another your favorite part of this weekend, if you attended Bell Tower at all, and uh, and other things. So please stay and uh, share in some pancakes. Excuse me. Uh, I have an announcement that was uh, shared with us uh, that at the Peyton Tradan School uh, in, what, two weeks on June 26th at 6.30 p.m., there'll be a free public lecture on human trafficking. So it'll be presented by Sister Shirley Feineran. I'm not sure how you say that, but Sister Shirley is the founder and presenter of Lila May's House, a trauma-informed residential home for adult women survivors of domestic trafficking. She's a retired associate of sociology from Briarcliff University and an advocate for immigration reform and educating others on human trafficking. So it's for all ages, including parents, grandparents, uh, educators, and potential victims. And she'll be talking about um, some of the ways that people are recruited, uh, indicators of it, and how to safely respond to possible victimization of children and youth. So that will be at the Peyton Trudan School um, at 6.30 p.m. in two weeks on Sunday the 26th. Uh, tomorrow night we had been slated to have um, the missionaries Larry and Jane Keyes join us in the fellowship hall for a potluck and a presentation. Uh, on Friday I was informed that they had tested positive for COVID. And so if you um, are aware at all, they've, they've had kind of a rigorous um, touring schedule of going to uh, as many churches as possible this summer to share. It's their uh, retirement tour 
uh, to share uh, decades of ministry at Africa University. And so they tested positive. I think they've been feeling well. They're just frustrated because they had more churches to go to, and, and um, they might try to uh, return to some that they miss for these few days uh, while they're in quarantine. So prayers for Larry and Jane Keys. And so tomorrow night's potluck will not uh, happen. We don't have a presentation to go along with it. So uh, we'll let you know if they come back to this area and we res reschedule that for later on in the summer and uh, be praying for them and that uh, everything stays mild. Are there other opportunities to serve and connect that I need to lift up? I don't think so. Um, joys and concerns. Oscar's got the microphone. and Oh, he's going right to Marla. Get it on. We have a joy. Our younger son, Adam, and his wife, Michaela, bought their first home, and they'll be moving to Knoxville soon. Congratulations to them. It makes me think of those progressive commercials about not turning into your parents. You guys know those? So watch out. I shared earlier that it was uh, a joy to be with the annual conference last week. Um, we've had online only for the last two years with the annual conference, and so it was a hybrid this year. Some chose, I think, I think two-thirds chose to, to join online, and about a third came in person, and it was a different venue than we've had in the past. It was um, at a new uh, Rexplex in West Des Moines, and so uh, annual conference for Iowa took place this year in a hockey rink. No one was put in the penalty box. And uh, just a joy to come together and, and recognize um, uh, ordinations and retirements, which are always wonderful, and have some discussions about um, the future of the church and decide some legislation and hear presentations about ministry and how we can be a part and budgets which are not exciting necessarily, but tell you about what's going on in the church. And, um, you know, our Iowa Annual Conference has had to downsize like other annual conferences, and so how we're, how we're making that work and looking forward to the future. So Sam's having knee replacement surgery tomorrow. This is his... We will definitely need custodial help. And if you would like to help out in the AV booth as well, because we're not going to let Sam walk up the stairs until, until he breaks that, that knee in a little bit. And so if you feel called to help out with that, let us know, or custodial services for the next few weeks. Any other joys or concerns? I'll share one more um, kind of uh, concern. Uh, if, if you're Facebook friends with me, you probably saw some of this information that I shared. But in the Florida Annual Conference, they had kind of a disruption a bit as they were um, approving, uh, clergy session was approving people for commissioning. So in the, I, in the United Methodist Church, there's lots of steps in the process towards ordination. And one of those steps is to be commissioned. And so you've You've gone through different interviews and different groups, and you've submitted paperwork and answered questions and done practice things. And so commissioning at that stage when you're approved, uh, you become a provisional member of your annual conference. And so you have a few years uh, in that status before you would be fully ordained. And uh, in the Florida annual conference, they vote... Uh, the, the Board of Ordained Ministries approves different people that they think are ready, and then the clergy session has to approve and say, we think that you've done good work, and we will approve uh, these folks to being uh, commissioned or ordained or whatever. And so um, it was a whole slate of 16 people, and they were not uh, approved by clergy session for commissioning. 
Uh, two of the ones that were brought forward by the Board of Ordained Ministry were openly gay and out. And for 31 years, Florida has always had them as a group rather than individuals because they noticed that men were getting through when they voted individually, but women and people of color weren't. And so they began to put them all together as one. And that's how Iowa does it as well. Uh, we, we do, at least in my time, <clears throat> as one slate. And so 16 people were not approved. They needed a 75% and they got to 72, which is the difference of seven votes. And so prayers for those 16 people who were uh, not able to be commissioned and yet, uh, I'm getting emotional here. The next day they served communion to the annual conference wearing the robes that they were to have worn for their commissioning service. So prayers for them and for the divisions in our United Methodist Church and uh, as we move forward and find ways to live together or to separate from one another and how we can do that amicably. And uh, we'll be having, this isn't the place for it, but we'll be having more discussions about how we're called to be here at this church and part of the Iowa Annual Conference and the United Methodist Church. So just prayers for those 16 and for all of our uh, siblings in Florida. All right, let me offer a prayer, and then we'll share the Lord's Prayer in a few minutes uh, when we come to the communion table. Gracious and wonderful God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the one who is present in our lives no matter what, as close to us as the air that we breathe. God, when we don't know what to say, we know that the Holy Spirit groans in intercessory prayer for us. Today we lift up those that are in transitions, especially those who are going through life transitions for the pastors of the United Methodist Church that are preparing to move and start new appointments, for those who are being celebrated with ordinations and recognitions and commissionings, and those that are retiring and celebrating the good gifts of their labor. We pray for those that are hurting, those that are dealing with diseases of the mind, of the body, or of the soul. God, whoever you have brought to our minds in those descriptions, we lift up to you their names and their faces now. God, we know that you see all and hear all. We thank you for your prayers on our behalf. We thank you for the breath in our lungs and the chance to enjoy and celebrate this day, to worship you with others, for fellowship. And we thank you for the food that will be served soon, that it may bless our bodies, so our bodies may be blessed to your service. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. We give to God our prayers, and we also give to God from all the gifts that we have. We have been richly blessed, and we want to return those things to God. The way that we do that is through our financial gifts. And if you'd like to financially support the ministries of this church, you can give online at jeffumc.com slash giving or in the lockbox by the bulletins on your way out. Um, uh, this Sunday, ooh, do we have a slide, is a special Sunday in the United Methodist Church. There are six of them throughout the year. It's Peace with Justice Sunday. I believe that 50% of that offering uh, stays uh, within the annual conference uh, to support um, ministries that are about peacemaking and not just peacemaking where we all um, ignore each other, but that justice is done as well and so that it isn't a, a hostile peace, but one where people are cared for and loved. 
Uh, I would also just share, we haven't had a stewardship moment in a little while. Let's see, now I gotta look at the time. Well, we're gonna run over, it'll be fine. Uh, we've, we've had a couple requests come through lately and um, I could talk more about it maybe in a few weeks, but uh, just, just prayers for, um, for the needs that are going on out in our community. Uh, we had a family come through, maybe some of you saw them um, asking for money on a street corner a couple, couple weeks ago, and they were traveling from California to Pennsylvania. Uh, a, a couple and their four-month-old child and traveling across the country and they ran out of money, which with the price of gas, that's not, a, that's not surprising at all. And they were able to collect some money from the community and we gave them some more money to help them um, make their way to a uh, guaranteed employment that he had. He had a year of guaranteed employment and he gave me a call last weekend to let me know that they made it safely and so we're thankful that we were able to help them for their journey. Um, after we were able to help, he, he asked that we could pray together, and he wanted uh, that Holy Spirit to activate and be part of that prayer. And so it was a blessing to get to know him. I got to see their, you know, you know, see their adorable baby and, and pray for them on that journey. And uh, as inflation rates go up and businesses close, uh, We'll be seeing more of that all around the country. So we want to be in prayer for, um, for our neighbors. Uh, I would invite you to turn in your hymnals uh, to the Great Thanksgiving, um, which I think is pages 9 through 11. The words are also on the screen as we share together in communion. We do have our little trash cans up on either side. And if you would like to, um, if you would like, uh, a prepackaged cup. We have them up here. If you are not comfortable receiving bread and juice, and that is fine. I am not offended by that at all. So if you want to come forward and receive that or grab it um, after worship, um, that is fine. So the basket is up here on the left side, on my right. So you could grab that on your way up if you would like to come forward but not uh, take these elements. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice would roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as beloved and forgiven children of God, let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, I'd like to invite the communion stewards to come forward. Christ our Lord invites all to the table who have repented of their sins and wish to live in closer relationship with him. And Christ has set the table himself, and he invites all of us, whether it has been two weeks since our last communion or two years. So you're welcome to come forward via the center aisle. Uh, You'll be handed a piece of bread and a cup, and you can uh, throw the cup away in the little wastebasket and then return via the outside aisle. Come taste and see that the Lord is good.
perfect timing, almost like we choreographed it. God did. All right, I invite you to uh, stand as we offer our doxology, our word of praise to God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the It was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our prayer of dedication. Come, Holy Spirit. Let us feel your love and power. We give thanks for the gifts of your abiding presence, and we ask that we feel to face the future. May you bless these gifts and empower them to be used for the building up of the kingdom of God. Amen. Why don't we just sing the first verse of our final hymn, number 465. Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. Holy Spirit, Truth 
That was a really short final hymn. So, why don't, I'm sure you haven't memorized, right? Will you join with me in the Holy Spirit Activate chant? All right, get ready. Holy Spirit Activate, Holy Spirit Activate, Holy Spirit Activate, Activate, Activate. Okay, let's go. May you have a blessed week as you go into the world to do justice. Love mercy and walk humbly with your God and with the power of the Holy Spirit. Have a blessed week.